On today's program, we'll talk about speaker height and answer a question that a lot of people have about these big beasts, the Infinity IRS 5 in Music Room 1. Now, apologies to my podcast listeners because you're not seeing what you could see if you were on the YouTube video. I will do my best to describe for the the radio audience, if you will, what, what we're seeing here, and, and see if we can't keep both mediums happy. This, this question comes from Paul, great name, in Worthington, and he, he writes, Hey, Paul, acoustic experts, oh God, I'm not sure what the hell an acoustic expert is, but we'll talk about that in a second. They say that speakers shouldn't be higher than half the height of the listening room. Yours are almost touching the ceiling in room one. What's your opinion? Tell us about the system you have. Uh, at home. And, you know, Paul, I'm going to skip that because I've, I've been through the system that I have it at home or I actually don't have at home. And, and I think it's going to be more interesting if we talk about this system. So what we're looking at is the wings of the Infinity IRS-5. They are seven and a half feet tall. They are about uh, a bear hug as big as I can go wide. And on the front of these, you if you were watching the video, you'd see 12 mid-range drivers going from floor to ceiling, and you'd see 24 tweeters. There are 12 more on the back, because this is what we would call a dipole. This type of speaker is called a line source, okay? So when the, when the audio experts or the acoustic experts say, ah, you shouldn't do that, it is so generalized that as to be irrelevant, okay? Let's not put a lot of credence. There, there are many ways to build loudspeakers. And the, the two most perfect forms that we know of building a loudspeaker are an infinitely small point source and an infinitely tall line source. Now, neither is practical, though the line source is far more practical. So a point source, this mythical thing, is something you know the size of an atom that can produce sound within your room. We don't have such a thing. And as, as that perfect little point grows and grows and grows into a, a sphere or a ball, then if you can picture the, uh, is it the Burmeister? Who, uh, no, MBL. MBL has those sort of balloons that they're, they're kind of metal balloons and there's a driver below it and it squeezes the balloon so that the whole sphere flexes. And that's an interesting way to do it. That's trying to get close to a point source, but it's anything but infinitesimally small. So th that's out. But a line source is, is certainly something practical. And the line source wants to be as tall as the room as best you can. So the waveform coming out of a line source is, is a long wave like that. It's kind of like a cylinder. And that cylinder uh, comes across the room and has a whole number of benefits, which I, I'm not going to bother to go into right now. But I talk a lot about this in my book, Confessions of an Audiophile. We go into actually great depth on that. And, and you might say, well, I haven't read that. Well, it's because I haven't finished it. <laughs> but anyway, someday I will, I promise you. I, I, I spent all day yesterday finishing up some of the, the paragraphs, and I really want it to be something special. So it, it's important to me that it be as good as it possibly can. So I apologize, it's only taken a year and a half longer than I had predicted, and Lord knows how much longer it will take. But, so this is called a line source, and that's why this speaker works so well. There's other reasons too. You notice that I talked about the way the drivers are broken up. Well, because each of these mid-range drivers only handles one twelfth, because there are 12 of them, of the sound coming out, each one has very little to do in terms of dynamics, right? One twelfth as much as a single driver. And many Infinity speakers were made with one ribbon tweeter and one planar uh, driver, uh, mid-range driver. And it did all the work, but this one breaks it up into 12. So that's, that's one of the reasons why 
this speaker is so damn dynamic. I mean, this thing just, whew, you put the 1812 on here and those cannons hit, go boom. I mean, it's, whoa. <laughs> Hope I didn't over modulate the mic there. Um, anyway, so this is a line source. Now, what they're talking about is a floor height speaker. And I've seen floor height speakers that are in the Diapolito uh, configuration where you've got a, a mirror image of drivers with tweeters in the middle and then expanding out and that were very tall and they sounded great. So whatever acoustic experts you're listening to that are telling you that, I might either go back and see if that's really what they're saying or ignore their advice because I don't buy into that at all. Okay, hope that helps. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye-bye.